Hi, my name is Tracy Newberry and you're about to watch an episode on the Online Prosperity Show and I'm known as the Baby Sleep Coach. Specializing in working with babies six to 11 months, I help parents solve their little one's sleep issues without using any of the cried out methods. The significantly reduces stress and protects the bond you've worked so hard to build. Um, enjoy the show, guys. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the baby whisperer herself. Tracy, how are you doing, my love? Really well, thanks, Prosper. How are you? Fantastic. Right, now, viewers, you might be tuning in here and you're watching this video with your little kid um, in arms or they, you've just put them to sleep and uh, it was a struggle, but worry not we've got to you the sleep, baby sleep expert here tracy who's going to actually teach you how to teach your kids to sleep with love with kindness and the utmost um respect all right so tracy here is a baby sleep coach that specializes in working with babies that are between six to 11 months and she actually helps parents like yourself solve their little ones sleep issues without using any of those cry it out methods. And this actually reduces the stress on them, protects the bond that you're supposed to be having with your kid. And obviously you would have worked far too hard, first of all, to create that baby, create that family, and you trying to work on your business. Now, Tracy, did I say any of that right? That's right, Prosper, that's, that's all 100%. Understandable. All right, so I'm a dad myself. And we've got a two-year-old. The first six months were horrible. Can you just give us um, an outline of why are kids so annoying? <laughs> no, I get you, Prosper. I get you. Um, I get you a hundred percent. So, and but and in in the first six months, you're right. Our oh, sleep is a little bit horrible, and that's why I work with babies from six months onwards because the first six months. Oh, I mean, it's parenthood is such a massive change to your life. Your whole life is changed upside down by this new baby. Um, and, you know, you're not sleeping. Um, you're trying to establish breastfeeding or, you know, get the bottle. Or um, you've got all these little things like allergies come up, lacto, you know, intolerances come up. <clears throat> so the baby's often, um, you know, uncomfortable within themselves. So you've got to get through all these little problems and big problems before, before sleep, you know, gets anywhere close to looking good and also in the first so in the first naughty three months it's said that the baby's going through their fourth trimester so they they they've come from your room where it's all dark and um they're being rocked and there's lots of motion all day long and it's quiet they hear your heartbeat they they've got the white noise of your of your body going on and then they come out into the world and it's you know it's bright there's lots of noise you know there's no emotion to go to sleep you just want them to go to sleep in their cars by themselves so that's a massive change for a, a baby who's been living in your womb for nine months so the north the 0 to 12 weeks you've got lots of adapting the baby's going through lots of adaptation um and also they have no uh um their body clock does not tell them what's day or night their, their circadian rhythm is 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 not established yet so they don't know if it's daytime it's night time so they're just waking eating sleeping waking eating sleeping um there's no there's no proper day night rhythm there and then from four months onwards at four months the circadian rhythm, the body clock is established and they can tell the difference between day and night. Um, and sleep starts to consolidate a tiny bit more at the four month mark. So you start getting longer stretches, the naps might get a little bit better, they might go down into their clock with that kind of, you know, um, uh, you know, fussing so much. Um, and then then you get the four to five month sleep progression. So you've just cut, you've, you've kind of come out of that newborn stage. It's a little bit better. And you go through a massive developmental leap. And the four to five month sleep progression is likened to that of newborn sleep. So you come out of it and go straight back into the kind of terrible sleep. And then you've got six months where you're out of the sleep progression, but then weaning typically starts. And uh, often that has an impact on sleep because the baby's digestive system is just starting to get used to the different foods and that kind of lets sleep. Um, and so from six months onwards, so, so seven months is the ideal golden spot to help your baby sleep in. Um, and then... Uh, so yeah, those first six months there are, they're kind of, they're a bit of a, a bit of a, a rattle. <laughs> 
<laughs> Great <laughs> stuff. Well, obviously, um, you know, as entrepreneurs in that first six months, that's probably the heat of everything else. And um, so from six to 11 months, you are probably working around the clock, trying to service your clients. What would you do now when your baby wakes up and settles throughout the night? So do you mean six to 11 months or before six months? I mean, the, 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 the kids that you start working with, I'm now just asking questions. Oh, I see. Okay. Entrepreneurs there. So, so, so when I go, when I go into a family, <clears throat> I look at, I look at the, the, the whole day, the whole night and the room that the environment, the baby's sleeping in, because often the environment, the baby's sleeping in plays such a massive part to the baby's sleep. And we often don't think about it. So everything that affects um, us as adults, noise, light, temperature, um, you know, the feel of our pajamas, the feel of the mattress, the feel of the sheets, it all in, impacts the baby's sleep. It all has an effect on baby's sleep. So I look at everything. I look at the room and I also work um, hand in hand with the feng shui specialist so that we make sure we get the room working properly. The energy of the room is working well. We look at the temperature. We look at the, um, you know, the sleeping bags that's supposed to go in, in that environment, in that temperature, the, the baby's clothing all that kind of stuff and then i look at the naps the daytime naps because often if the the daytime naps are not going well it impacts sleep badly at night because they work hand in hand with each other the daytime sleep and the nighttime sleep um so i get the naps working really well and when i go in to see a family i when i do one-to-one -one consultations i go in um, at a nap time and i do a nap with the mom so i get to go in and see the room and um i, I walk the mom through a little nap time routine we set up a little nap time routine which helps the baby know what's coming next and starts to prepare for sleep and it acts as a really great uh you know sleep association and a cue that sleep's coming soon because so many moms that I meet, they just kind of will walk into the baby's room and think, okay, must be nap time. Just kind of walk in and pop the baby into the cart and just think, why isn't my baby sleeping? So that nap time routine is super important. And, and then during the night, we go through, you know, what the baby's obviously doing and then gentle ways of how to... Um, uh, help the baby soothe and feel calm and relax and um, uh, fall asleep during the night and stay asleep and what to do when the baby wakes up so uh, going in and you know comforting or like feeding the baby if the baby's hungry um, help maybe get nice and sleepy put the baby back in and just so it's a, a small simple steps that you can take but um, the the key part is that I'm, I'm, I work with them for eight weeks a uh, family for eight weeks after the consultation um, and this really helps. So we we on we on WhatsApp every day. I'm I'm looking at what happened last night. I'm looking at what happened to the, the, the naps yesterday. Um, and then we keep tweaking and moving forward slowly, slowly. And um, and you know the results are wonderful. Understandable. Obviously, if a baby can sleep, uh, and you know an entrepreneur can do their work, they will be a happier yeah. uh, person. Then you kept uh, talking about day night uh, daytime naps and. Um, you know, and, and, and the normal nighttime naps, is it really, um, um, you know, is, is it recommended that you actually set a strict time that they're sleeping or a recommended time that they actually, um, you know, fall asleep or do you, you, do you just look at them if they're tired and then just send them away? So the way I work is that, uh, in the first, in the first six months, it's going to be all about, um, uh, watching for awake time, um, awake, your awake times and sleep cues. So, um, if a baby's you know can be awake for an hour and fifteen minutes, then you know that around about hour, an hour and fifteen minutes after the baby's woken up from his nap, he's going to be tired again and need to go back down for another nap. Um, so at around about that time, you'll start to see the sleep signs, like you know, rubbing the eyes or getting grumpy or pulling the hair or um, turning away from uh, you know the activity in the room and just getting a bit you know grumpy with with laugh. And then you know that you know go up and do your nap time routine and put the baby down to sleep. So and if you if you miss that window, the baby then becomes overtired and then it becomes much harder to, for the baby to fall asleep. So the baby might seem like it's called a second wind and just super wired, or the baby might cry a lot. Um, younger babies are um, 
are often said to have colic when I don't think it's actually colic. I think it's just the baby becomes so overtired that all the baby can do is cry and you hit this wall and you have to get past this overtired wall and come through it and, and you can help the baby settle then. So, um, because they just can't, it, when, when the baby becomes overtired, they release cortisol, the, the, the stress hormone and the body just, you know, all, all that cortisol running through them. It's just, you know, they just you have to release it somehow and they just they cry, 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 cry. And that's often seen, you know, it's often called colic, but I don't actually believe that there is such a thing called colic. Um, I think a lot of it is overtired or something within the body going on. Um, so, oh, um, so then at around seven months, you'll get into a more routine. So you'll have a morning nap, a lunchtime nap, and a late afternoon cat nap. And then those naps will fall at about the same times every day. And you can kind of, within a half an hour of each side, you can see, you know, where your naps are going to be. So I would, so that's a good way. So more or less at, you know, 12 o'clock, you're going to need a nap. More or less at four o'clock, you're going to need a nap. But to, 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 to put the baby down and say, well, at four o'clock on the dot is your nap time. And there's no, you know, there's no, you know, time to, that, that can often lead to babies just, you know, crying and naps are stressful because they just, you know, maybe they wanted to be awake for 15 more minutes or, and you saying, no, it's four o'clock. You've got to go to bed. So well, I was just, we, we do have a policy of not negotiating with terrorists. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So you, you, you are suggesting that you, you, you know, you ease them into the, the, the sleep pattern, not just saying it's four o'clock. They have got to go to sleep. Yeah, for sure. And that's the thing. And every day, you know, days can, every day is a different day. So and there are some babies who every, every day at nine o'clock, they will nap at 12 o'clock, they will nap at four o'clock, they will nap. And that's just the, just the, that's the way they are. But there's some babies who, who will just, you need to be a bit more flexible and just kind of really look at the day and you know, what time they woke up and the next nap is going to be at that time. So you can, you can plan it. Um, uh, quite a lot, especially as they get older, it get, becomes easier and easier and you can aim for that certain time for an app time. But in the beginning stages, it's a little bit more difficult to say, okay, it's 12 o'clock, you have to go nap now because they might have, you know, they might not just not be tired enough then or they might have become tired before then. So you've got to put them to bed a bit, you know, before then. So it's just about uh, going with the flow a little bit as well. Understandable. Now, you know, I'm also just taking reference from what we did um, with our little girl. Would you recommend playing really soft, um, soothing music to help them fall asleep? Or is that something that would actually, um, you know, awaken them even more? So I, I, I'm a massive fan of using uh, a lullaby before sleeps. And it, it acts as a, a really lovely sleep association. So that whenever you, whenever you need your baby to nap or, you, you know, the baby's tired, you put on the lullaby and it acts as a sleep association. Some, like Pavlov's dog, when, you know, when they rang the bell, the dog would come and eat his food. It's the same thing. It's like, the, oh, my music, oh, it's time to go to sleep. And it's great because it, if, if you travel, if you go to, you know, away for the weekend, or if you've got to go, you know, go away for holidays, you just take your same music with you play your lullaby and your baby's like, oh, my music, oh, it's time to nap. So, so that's a, it's a great sleep association. So I love using a lullaby before sleep, the same one. And um, so, so I, yeah, I'm a massive fan of, of using gentle music before sleep. And then I also love using white noise um, through the night for baby sleep. Um, so that it blocks out, um, you know, any noise that can wake a baby, a siren going past on the road, a dog barking, you cooking dinner down, you know, in your kitchen or, uh, you know, all, all those kinds of things that, that wake a baby up. So white noise helps to block out that noise and keep them asleep for longer. Right. Understandable. The white noise is just, shh, right. So the white noise is like fan, um, blow, like a hair dry, like hair drying sound, uh, waves, could be rain, could be a stream, could be waterfall, could be um, the ocean, the sounds, the waves, that kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Understandable. Now, one other thing, um, would you recommend a bath before going to bed? Yeah, for sure. I would definitely recommend a bath straight before bed. So bath and then you do a bedtime routine and then it's, it's bedtime. So the bath is great because it's um, as you put your baby into the warm water and then you take the baby out the warm water, the cold, the cold air hits your baby's skin and the warm water releases melatonin, which is great. And then the, the cool air cools your baby down. So, and 
melatonin is produced, um, it, it, your, your baby produces melatonin better when um, you, when they are cooler than when they are hotter. So the, the the temperature of your baby's room makes a massive difference to re, re, you know the, uh, releasing melatonin, the sleepy hormone. Melatonin is the one that makes them go to sleep. So if the baby's room is really hot, or if they're dressed really hot, um, melatonin is inhibited. Um, so it's better for your baby's room to be cooler than too hot. Um, so, so bathing before bedtime is, is great because it helps to release that sleepy hormone, which you want because you want your baby to go to sleep. <laughs> Understandable. Well, I cannot thank you enough for all this advice that you're giving us. And I would think if there's a mother or a parent that's um, in the audience and is watching and probably listening to all these uh, great tips that you're sharing, they might be wondering how then can, I, can they actually get a hold of you or what is it that you can actually help them with? Have you got um, you know, some sort of courses that you offer or do you have a method that people can um, you know, reach out to you for or something like that? So the way I work is um, through one-to-one -one consultations um, and you can get in touch with me on Happy Baby and Me. But um, I, I'm, I also run um, seven day gentle baby sleep challenges and I just finished one last week and there'll be another one in the beginning of uh, November. So um, I can definitely keep uh, followers updated with that. Um, and so, and, and then later on um, that, that that's, um, the challenge will, will probably turn into a course where I can help um, you know, people further around uh, more widespread. Understandable. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to be putting in all the links at the bottom there. And um, obviously, so that people can actually connect uh, with you. Because as entrepreneurs, you might acknowledge this, that, um, you know, having um, a, a well-mannered baby or a baby that actually works um, in unison to your schedule and you're also understanding their own rhythm would make you less stressful and you actually be more productive with your work right there. Now, obviously, um, this is an entrepreneur show. We just probably want to know what inspired you to, um, you know, want to work with um, babies and what, what is it about kids that is um, fascinating to you there, uh, Tracy? Um, I've always had, I just, I've always been super, super passionate about children. I always loved babies ever since I can remember since I was a kid, I loved babies. Um, so when I was about 11 years old, I started, uh, volunteering at an orphanage in South Africa. Um, and that was really lovely. It was, I, I think I did it for about a year and a bit. Um, but it was, it was also quite sad work when you see the children getting sent back to the families or coming in. And, um, but I did, I did love it. It was for, for um, abandoned and abused children, which, and so that was really, um, touching. And then, uh, when I was 18, I came to London. And all I wanted to do was be a nanny um, in London and, you know, in the, like in the movies. And I did. I got a nanny job and it was amazing. I loved it. And then I carried on. I went back to South Africa after two years, worked as a nursery school teacher and as a nanny, and then came back to London two years after that. And I've been back ever since. So I nannied for, I've been working with babies for nearly 12 years, uh, nearly 13 years now. Um, and I nannied for 10 of those years. So lots of, of baby experience through that. And then as I went, like, when I was working with the families, I always seemed to get the baby sleeping really well, or the children really well. But I didn't understand that it was anything that I was, I was doing. I just thought this is just the way that children sleep. They just sleep well. Um, and then the more, like, the further along in my journey I got, the more I realized that maybe it was something that I was doing. And I just, it felt so natural to me. It felt, it felt just, you know, it felt, it felt you know, very natural to me. Um, and then I got married in 2014 in the summer and decided that, so, so before, a year before that I was doing, uh, the, working as a nanny in the day. And then I would do, I was working in the, in the nighttime, um, as a night nurse. So going into, um, newborn, uh, fa pa uh, families with newborn babies and I would look after the baby during the night time and go back to nannying in the day, go back to work in the night, <laughs> um, and then I started doing like some sleep training jobs. I mean, it's called sleep training, but I hate that word. It sounds so harsh. So I'll say sleep coaching. Um, and it was just that I was getting really amazing results. It was really gentle. And the moms were all saying to me, you know, Tracy, this is amazing stuff. And I was like, is it? Um, and so then 
I decided not to go back to nanning after I got married um, and set up my own business called Happy Baby and Me. And uh, it just really kicked off. It just really, um, the word of mouth spread. And at that time, I would go in um, and do the nights myself. So I would sleep over for five consecutive nights. So I'd go home in the morning and then go back in the evening. Um, so, and I would teach the baby to sleep um, myself in the night, in the night times. And then I felt pregnant with my little girl. She's nearly two as well now. Um, and I stopped doing the nights myself and then moved the business to consultation based only. Um, so that's what I do now. I do it's consultation based. All right. So did you have to put your baby to sleep before this show? Oh, so, so my time is morning. Yeah. So she's, <laughs> she <laughs> good to sleep. Um, but, yeah, she's 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 good. She's um she's a very good sleeper. Thank goodness. So everyone, before, when I was pregnant, I have a lot of entrepreneurial friends, and it was like you know Tracy. It's different when it's your own baby. I said, you know, guys, either I'm going to close the the business down, or I'm going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. No, that's that's a remarkable story um of yours right there, and um, you you're doing an amazing job. You covered yourself a niche that not a lot of people would find, um, you know, time and the passion for it and you actually are getting results. So that's remarkable. Now, do you have any sort of Thank last you. tips that you might have, um, you know, things that people can just, you know, nibble on while they're going about their day to day lives with their kids? Um, for me, I mean, I guess that there's so much, um, sleep advice and so much noise out there when it comes to sleep now that um, so many moms are told different things and to me one of one of the biggest things that I see makes a big difference to babies is that they've been told moms have been told not to feed a baby before sleep time it's because it creates bad sleep associations and there's ways to get around that but it's um to me, having a feed is the most natural thing in the world. Breast or, you know, have a bottle feed. It makes the baby sleepy. It makes the baby um, relax. It makes the baby, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, calm down. And they, they love the comfort and the touch. Um, and by doing that, you take all, you, your, the, the bottle, the breast feeding is taking away so much of the hard work for you because the baby's getting sleepy by doing that. And then you can gently put the baby into the cot and then help the baby, you know, finish falling asleep in the cot if you need to. But by, by taking away the feed, the baby has no way to get to that really comfortable, um, you know, sleepy place other than having to rock the baby for ages or go for walks in the buggy or in the car. So by, by telling that to moms, they're stressing, you know, moms are getting really stressed out by taking this feed away and then magically having to, you know, the baby, you know, has to fall asleep somehow. But so it just ends up, um, it ends up being a lot harder for the parents because you just don't have this, you know, a little helper of the milk to get your baby sleepy. So I would say do, an, do a feed before naps as part of your nap time routine and feed before bedtime. Um, and you don't have to put them all the way to sleep so that, you know, they, they don't know how they got into their cart. Um, but that, that sleep, that, that feeding and getting them sleepy, it, it's, it's really, I mean, it's natural and it's uh, take a lot of the hard work away for you. Understandable. Well, thank you so much. I've learned a lot of lessons. Um, I can't wait to have my second one so we can just ship them across <laughs> to the UK yeah. and you can help them sleep all the way there yeah. <laughs> because obviously it is one thing that really um, might sound like it's an obvious thing, but a lot of parents are struggling with that. And it's, especially if they're entrepreneurs, they would have to take time off oh, yeah. and yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's cripples with their productivity. So thank you so much for this advice. And um, yeah, if you're watching this uh, episode, you would know that we are always bringing in experts like Tracy that are actually well versed within their own industry so that you can um, learn the tips, the tricks and tips that you need in order for you to have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. Now, Tracy, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. It's been so, so fun. Thank you, Prosper. It's been amazing. Great stuff.